What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about Yacht. So if you're not familiar, Yacht is a management tool. It's like a graphical interface that you can manage all your Docker containers out of. And I'll show you what it looks like right now, just so you can see. So this is an instance of Yacht that I spun up previously. You can see over here I have a Heimdall container and I'm able to go through and manage all the Docker containers. But that's uh, we're going to get to in a little bit. I'm going to show you how to set this up on an Ubuntu machine and then get going so we can manage Docker containers. So you may be wondering why I picked Yacht. So yeah, I've been using Portainer for a while. Actually, pretty much the entire time I've used Docker. So I'm really not too good with the Docker command line. I know it's a skill I should work on, and I plan to. I just haven't gotten around to it. But the graphical interfaces are just, of course, so much easier. So I've used Portainer for about two years now, and I think it's time to look at some of the other options. So I'm going to check out Yacht, and we're going to go over that today. So let's get right into it. So the first thing is we'll go over to Yacht's website so you can access that at yacht.sh or you just Google Yacht uh, Docker and it brings you to the first head on the site. Uh, so we'll come over to the get started. It's super simple. You just need pretty much any kind of Linux distro. I'm going to use Ubuntu because that's my flavor of choice. And it's just two commands. You just, well, it's three because you got to install Docker. But other than that, it's two commands and Yacht is running. You're ready to go. So I'm going to spin up a Ubuntu machine really quick and we're going to be using the Proxmox helper scripts to make it really easy. And I'm just going to be running this off Proxmox, but of course you can run it on anything if you have like a standalone Linux box you're running on or you maybe run something with like Linode or some other uh, cloud service. No problem, it can be done there too. So I'm just going to set up my machine real quick and then we'll get going. So on a side note, I know we covered the Proxmox helper scripts a few videos ago, but if you're not familiar they do have ones where you can deploy operating systems. So you can either do it through an LXC container or an actual virtual machine. So I grabbed the 2404 virtual machine one and it just makes the process so much simpler. In the past, making a Ubuntu VM in Proxmox can take forever just because the Ubuntu install takes forever. I mean, it easily can take 25, 30 minutes to do an install. I'm able to knock this out in about 15 minutes and it does everything for me. The only thing I need to do is change the hardware specs which is fine and it's not a big deal they tell you how to do that in the write-up so you can come over to their github and it actually shows you how to reconfigure the you know the user account and then the disk size and anything else you might need so i really do enjoy the proxmox helper scripts especially on a project like this it just makes time go by a lot quicker i'm going to finish letting this ubuntu machine get set up and then we're going to finish setting up yacht and get going so we'll be back when this is ready Okay, so I have my machine set up. So this, again, is the Ubuntu machine I set up with the, the Proxmox helper scripts. All in all, maybe about 15 minutes. The machine's all set up, fully upgraded. We're good to go. So the first thing we need to do is do sudo apt install docker uh, docker io. Probably really don't need sudo since I am on a root account, but that's how I'm just going to do sudo. So we're going to give about a minute for Docker to install and we'll come over to the Yacht page. So we're going to come over here and copy this first command. You do need to copy them separately. You can't just copy them all in one shot because it won't work properly. So we're just going to let this finish doing this thing. So we're going to install Docker and then uh, we'll pick it back up. Okay, so I got Docker installed. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to copy the first one, the Docker volume create Yacht. We're going to paste that. And you can see over here it returns yacht, so it means it made the volume. And I'm just going to copy this next command, this whole docker run. And what this is going to do is pretty much pull the image. And then it's going to put in the initial variables we need. So like it's going to put in the ports, it's going to run it. And then it's going to just map some uh, directories for the host and the image. So now we can see it looks like it's all good. So now I should be able to just make this bigger. And we can come over to... Actually, I need the IP first. Uh, let's see, this machine is 161. So now we'll just come over to 192, 168, 50, 161, colon, 8000. Now this is the yacht page. Now it does specify in the documentation, if you already run Portainer, that it's going to use 8001, because that'll be the next available port for it to use. You technically can use Portainer and Yacht on the same Docker instance, but I don't see why you would really want to, and they're probably going to clash at some point and cause issues. So I would pick one or the other. To log in, the default credentials are admin at yacht.local, and the password is P-A-S-S. -S. 
you need it again, it is over here in the documentation. You have admin at yacht.local and pass is the password. You can change that by coming over to user and then user settings and change password. And then here you can change the email. So if you could assign it your actual email and give it a password or however you want to do it. So the first thing we're going to do come over here is we're going to see the dashboard. This is supposed to be the yacht container, but it gave it a random Docker uh, name. So we can edit this if we want and change the name. So I can call this yacht. I'll we'll just hit continue and we'll hit continue again because this is the yacht container that's already set. So I'm just going to hit deploy. It's going to redeploy this container and hopefully it doesn't break the whole system. So we'll give this a second. Okay, now that we have Yacht all set up, we can come over here and actually start deploying some stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to Templates, and we're going to add the template. So I already have it added, but we're going to hit the plus button, and they recommend adding the self-hosted pro. So they actually, by default, they have a link over here, so there would be a, you know, like a little blurb, and it would have the link right here. Uh, I don't have it, so I can't show it to you again, but that's how you would add your template. Um, from th there, it's going to redirect you back to your templates over here. So you, since you can seem to add multiple templates, you just have to click and select on it. And then from here, you're going to see pretty much all the common Docker containers that you probably see across the board. So that you probably typically use. So you're all good. I actually see Heimdall over here. So we're going to deploy that. What's nice is it has a view. So you can kind of get an idea of the settings and you could also get to the Docker hub image. I'm going to click deploy. And then from here, it's just going to be a pretty simple de uh, it's just going to be a pretty simple deployment. So this is just the general stuff. It's going to have the name, the Docker Hub name, and then the restart policy. I'm going to leave it default because that's good right now. Next is going to be the networking. Make sure you just change it over to bridged, uh, bridge, unless you're running something particular on your Docker container, like a VPN or something else. Uh, just add in the ports. We're going to click next. Here's the volume. So if you have just, you know, the basic stuff, you're probably good. But if you're running something like Jellyfin or maybe another container like the Samba share that needs to be mapped to another directory, you just add that over here. And it's just simple. You just come over here and hit the plus button and then you can just put it in there. We're going to continue again. And then we just have environmental variables. Probably won't need these uh, only certain times on containers you do. And but it would be over here or you could add them later on. All right, deploy. So now you can see over here, Heimdall set up, and if I come over here, it gives me labels for the different UIs, and then if you hover over them, it gives you the port. So I'm just going to click the web UI one over here, and you can see we have Heimdall that came up. So nothing's in Heimdall yet because it's a fresh deployment, but super simple. I mean, we deployed in Heimdall in about a minute. And then we just have a summary of the Docker container, so you can see all the settings, you can see the processes, the logs need to troubleshoot or anything like that. And then there's just statistics of the resources being used. But now you can come back to applications and you can see all your Docker containers currently deployed. We already went over templates. We're gonna skip projects because I really don't know what that is just yet. And then there's resources. So resources are gonna be your stuff like your images, your volumes and the networks. So this is gonna be all your Docker container images. So if you're not familiar as you get updates or new containers deployed, it leaves the unused images behind and it doesn't automatically remove them unless you have some sort of policy to do that. So every now and then you might want to just take a peek and see if you have a lot of unused containers because they do take up space on your system. But over here is where you can see those images. We have volumes. So you looks like you can pretty much map out volumes to start it out. So you could just set it over here and then there's networks. So if you need additional networks other than the bridge network or the host or container, you can set those in here. Other than that, we have settings, and in here we get the basic info. You can change the color scheme. And then what I really like is there's template variables. So you can kind of get like static variables going to be used across all your containers. So over here, you can see that they're mapping out directories and they're using like a static command to do it. So this variable could just be used in place of writing out all these directories every time. But they also do it for other stuff like the PUID and the PGID. These are used in different containers sometimes, and it's just a static value now. So if you need those, you could add them in here, just simply just by hitting the plus button. Uh, it's covered up by my face, so sorry, you can't really see it. But that's how you would do it, and then there's just a save button. Other than that, the only thing you might need is to change your username and password. So you could just come up here in the top right, click user, 
and then you can change passwords. You could also change the email. So you could change it to your actual email. So you have a user account and then the password and just set it over here. But other than that, that's really all this stuff that needs to be configured in Yacht. And that's, yeah, that's about it. So that was Yacht and uh, pretty simple. It's a simple install, it's only a couple commands. And then from there, you just gotta put the template and then it's pretty easy just to start deploying your containers. So if you guys like Yacht, drop below or maybe you use a, another you know container management that you might have. So just comment those below what you use. As always, I'll have all the links to all the gear I use in my home lab in the, the description. I'll also have a link to my Discord server. So if you want to join up and chat, we could do it in there. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.